Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a hover effect to team members' bios in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, give the page a name, and then I'm going to click on use Divi Builder. So in this design, we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on build from scratch. And then I'm just going to close this for now. Now over here on my section settings, I need to come over here and add a padding of 100, both to the top and the bottom, just to add a bit of uh, breathing space. So I'm going to click here on design spacing, add my 100. And then I'm going to click on this uh, chain icon so that the value is added both to the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. Next, I'm going to come over here and uh, add my rows. So I'm going to click this plus button, add a single column. And in that column, we're going to add a text module. So I'm going to click here on text. And uh, what we need to have in here is just text that says meet our talented team and make sure that you highlight it and set it to heading two. Now we need to go in and customize this text. So I'm going to click here on design, heading text. Make sure you click on the heading two tab. And then we're going to change our font to Sinzel. And then over here, we're going to make sure that we set this to this option, align it to the center. And then we want to give this a size of 70. You can see here it's nice and big. So for now, we're going to go ahead and save. Next, we need to add another module. So I'm going to click this plus button and this time it's going to be a divider. I'm going to select my divider module. So as you can see, this line is way too big. We need to uh, reduce the size a little bit. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing. Uh, we're going to set this to about uh, 26%. Okay, so now we have a problem. This is aligned to the left, but we want this centered. So this is where you can just click on module alignment and click on the center item. Right, so uh, we can see here that our color is off. So we need to come back over here to the color. Click on the color picker and uh, just add all threes. Okay, so now my color looks okay. So we're done for now. I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, the next, thing, the, st the next stage now is to add our columns, which are going to have all our effects. So I'm going to come over here and click this plus button here uh, to add a brand new row. So in this row, we're going to add three equal columns. I'm going to go ahead and select that. We're going to close this for now because we need to make some adjustments to our row settings. So I'm going to click here on row settings, click on design, sizing. So we want to make sure that this row is set to full width. And then over here, make sure you choose custom width. And we need to add a specific value here of 2000. Okay, so we want it nice covering, you know, the whole width. And then over here, we're going to set our gutter width. So the gutter width is a space between the columns. So we want to make sure there's no spaces between the columns. So I'm going to go ahead now and reduce that all the way down to one. And then equalize column height. I'm going to set this to yes. Now it's time to add our padding and our margin. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a top and bottom margin of 50 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and set it here. And I want this both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to activate my chain. Next, we're going to add a top and bottom padding. So I'm going to come over here, add my padding of 10 pixels, activate my chain. Now, this is where we get to add our left and right padding. So I'm going to come over here. Again, this is going to be five pixels. I'm going to add my left and right pixels. Now, to the rest of these columns, all we need to do is to add left and right um, five pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So now I've added my spacing to column one, column two, and column three. So the next stage now is to add a bit of a box shadow to our row. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow choose my style and I'm going to come all the way down here to my blur strength, set this to 80 because we want this to really spread. And then over here on our spread strength, we're going to set this to minus 14. So we want this, we want this very, very subtle. So the color here, the default one is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Now it's time to add all our modules. So I'm going to start here by cl clicking here on this plus button. So we're going to add our image module. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to come over here, click on this area here and add my image. So you can use any image you want, any size, as long as the three sizes are the same. So I'm going to go with this first image here. Click on upload an image. 
And then I'm gonna come over here to design filter. So we want our image here or our images to look, to look black and white. So to do that, we need to drag the saturation all the way down to zero, okay? So that's gonna make our image look black and white. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save. So next we need to add our blurb module. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, search for my blurb module, I'm gonna select it. So the title here is where the name goes. So our lady here is going to be Joyce Doe. And for our text, I'm just using this dummy text, but you can go ahead and add your own text that you need for that area. So now that I have my text, uh, you can see here this blur comes with a with an image by default. We don't want an image, we, want, we need an icon. So we're gonna click here on image and icon and we're gonna set our icon as a plus button. So I'm gonna come over here, choose this plus button. Now we need to make further adjustments to this icon and to the text. But before we do that, we want to add a background color here. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button paste my, in fact, uh, this is gonna be an RGBA value. So I'm gonna drag the slider down a little bit and paste my values between these brackets, just like that. Now we also need to add a hover state. So make sure you can see this arrow here. So I'm gonna click on it, click on the hover tab. And again, I'm gonna paste my values between the brackets. So if you wanna use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that, I have, uh, that I've added all my background colors, the next thing we need to do is to make some customizations to our icon. So I'm gonna click here on design, image and icon. So first of all, we're gonna set our icon to white, and then I'm gonna click on circle icon. And the circle color here is going to be black. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. And then over here, our icon placement needs to be on the left. So I'm gonna choose left. Right, so this is where now we need to make a specific size or give our icon a specific size. So to do that, you wanna activate use icon font, font size. Okay, so we're gonna set this to 50 pixels. So now it's nice and big. So the thing is, we don't want our icon to appear on hover. So we need to add the uh, colors to the hover states. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to icon color, click on this um, arrow and make sure the hover is selected and then click on this color here. And that's just pretty much a transparent uh, color. Okay, and then over here, we're gonna do this to, this, uh, to the uh, circle color, do the same thing. So now you can see on hover, we won't see that icon. Now let's head over to our default text settings. So I'm gonna start here with my title font. So I'm just gonna click here on this brush tool. This will take me directly to my text options. So I'm gonna start here with the title font. We're gonna make sure we use Sinzel just to keep the consistency. Our font weight is gonna be bold. And our font style here is gonna be small caps and the color is going to be black. Right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our size to zero because we don't want this showing uh, on the normal state. We want it showing on the hover state. So I'm gonna go ahead now, add my zero. And then uh, while I'm here on my text uh, size, I'm gonna click on the arrow and then add my value on the hover. And on the hover, we're gonna set this to 30, okay. That's looking great so far. So now let's go to our body uh, text settings. So for our body text settings, uh, I'm gonna click here on this uh, brush tool and we are going to set this to open sans. So I'm gonna select it. Our color is going to be black. And then as we did with the title, we don't want this showing on my normal state. So I'm gonna set my size to zero and our body line height needs to be set to 1.8. Right, so while we're here on our body text size, I'm gonna click on this arrow, and then on the hover state, we want to add the size when we hover, and the size is going to be 14. Great, so that's looking good so far. Now let's add our default uh, body spacing. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing. So I'm gonna start with my top margin, set it to 3.7 VW, and for the bottom, we're gonna set this to 1.5, so while we're here, we might as well add our sizes for our smartphones and tablets. So I'm gonna click here on, uh, so I'm gonna click here on my tablet view, set my bottom to two VW. And for our, mar for our phone, we're gonna set our margin top to minus nine VW. And that's gonna be also the same for the tablet. Okay, so moving on, we need to also add the hover spacing. So I'm gonna come over here and click this little uh, arrow here. So now that I have this arrow selected, I can go into the hover state and uh, for the top, I'm gonna add minus 11.38 
Now over here on the padding, so we need to make sure that we are on the hover state. So I'm gonna click here this, on this arrow as well. So here we need to add a top and bottom margin of 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate this and also add a right padding of 50. So pretty much I'm happy with uh, what I've added on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. Okay, so now you can see that on the hover state, everything is in place, but of course we need to save and exit the visual builder for us to see the complete effect. Right, so what we need to do now, we have these two empty columns. So we just need to clone and add the rest of the content here. So I'm gonna hold down my command key. If you're on a PC, it's control. So just click the items you want to uh, move over. So now I've selected my two modules and then I'm just gonna hit command C as a shortcut to copy. If you're on a PC, it's control C and then control V to paste. So I'm gonna come over here and paste. And then finally, all you have to do is to go into each and one of these modules and change the images. So I'm gonna come over here and choose this one here. And you also want to go to, in fact, I'll save this for now. And then you also wanna come over here to text and then change the name here as well. So we can call this Susan, save that. Come over here, click on this uh, gear icon, click on this image. We're gonna change the image as well. Upload an image, I'm gonna save that. And then I'm also gonna come into my uh, module settings here. And this is going to be Jackie. Great, so now that I have all the names and everything is in place. Now, before we preview this, I'd like to say, when you add your images, make sure that all your images are the same size, otherwise they're not gonna look right. All right, so I'm gonna save the page now and exit the Visual Builder. So now let's take a look and see if this is working okay. So first of all, it's looking uh, good so far. So now when I hover over this, you can see that uh, all the content shows. And this one should work the same as well. And this one as well. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.